This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Well, we actually got two ice machines down today. Left one says high pressure cutout active. This one right here, when you get the triangle with the asterisk, it says long harvest. So what you can do is it gives you a bunch of causes. I don't deal with any of that. Just clear the alert, exit, start the machine over and watch and see what happens. But two machines down, they've got absolutely no ice in the bin. Whenever it gets like that, I tell them to order ice because it's not gonna catch up even if the machine started working right now. Next, on the right machine, I turn it on, then go to real-time data. So go to service, real-time data, time and temp. All the sensors are good. And then we can look at the thickness probe and see what's going on with that. Now, oftentimes, if the machines are sparkly clean, that means the cleaning company's been out here, and they have a separate company they use for that, and they oftentimes will make these things way out of adjustment. It kind of feels like that right now. It feels like the thickness probe's not adjusted right. So we'll have to uh, see if that's the cause or not. I have a special tool for that. So this one's in a pre-chill. I'm gonna work on both of these. This one right here says high pressure cutout delay. Now that'll happen for a couple reasons, but the power switch is not doing anything. So we might have a bad touchpad. but let's jump up onto the roof and see what's going on up there. That's how this works. It gets a little confusing back and forth. I didn't go to the roof yet. This one right here says freeze, but no water came in. So we need to check to make sure that the water fill valve is working because that should have filled already. So what you can actually do is shut it off and then go into menu, service, diagnostics, control board, enable relays. This thing should be filling with water at the moment and it is. There's water filling, so why didn't it fill before? So that's interesting. So the, the, the fill valve works, okay? You can go to a self-check on the control board. We'll let it do go through that. We're gonna let it do its self-check, and then um, we'll start it over and watch another cycle and see if maybe the water level probe's dirty or not sensing water right or something. So it says it passed. Passed, yes, keypad test. Okay. I don't, I don't know what the heck I did here. I don't know how to get out of this. What did I do? <laughs> I don't know what I did. I don't know how any of this stuff works. I don't think there's anything wrong with this. I just think I got myself stuck in this loop of this machine. Oh, one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> you gotta, it said five to exit. What does passed no? Oh, I don't know. I have no idea what any of that means, but I think it passed. <laughs> All right, so we're making ice, but why isn't it filling? So let's go to, I'm gonna turn it off again. Go to service, diagnostics, inputs, curtain switch closed, high pressure closed, bin level. Ice sense no, water high. It's sensing that water's high when it's not. So let's uh, look at the sensor. So I'm gonna I'm take out the water pump and then pull the sensor out and have a look at it. Uh, the cleaners did a good job of cleaning the machine, right? Look at that. It's ridiculous. I'm not even gonna try to clean that. I'll just put a new water valve, uh, water level probe in there. When it gets like that, I'm not gonna play games. I've got a new water level probe right here. I carry a bunch of Manitowoc parts for my normal stuff. But uh, what I notice here is look in here and when I push on it, watch, notice that it goes in. Okay, it's not in its normal position and that's because this is curled up. Now I'm gonna show you something. When you install these, you need to make sure there's no curl in it, okay? Yeah, these guys, this thing's like all out of whack. You, Cause the, this, this sensor right here will, uh, will restrict, the cable will keep it like, look at, I'm just turning on the cable. Like, okay, so now it's installed better, right? There's not a natural curl on it and it's actually touching the evaporator. So this is the level at which it should be away from the evaporator, 
right there. This is a special tool that I have. So that's normal position. Okay, so that the thickness is out of adjustment too. Someone made me this tool, by the way. They just machined it for me. So for this machine, it looks like there's multiple things, but now I adjusted it. So notice the probe is not gonna move. Well, that was because I hit the dimple, but there's a dimple in there, but right here, it shouldn't move and it's not because it's just barely clearing this. And I believe this is an 11 and 30 seconds gap, if I remember right, that or nine 30 seconds, whatever the book tells you, that's what this is. So, but yeah, that's how you want the starting point and then watch a couple batches and adjust accordingly after that. But always make sure that this isn't all twisted up because again, look, all I gotta do is twist on it and I can manipulate the probe. So if you put it in backwards, so now I have it adjusted perfectly, right? So if I put it in and put a twist on it and put it in, let's see what happens. There's that. Actually, I, put it, I twisted it the wrong way. But you get the point that if you twist it the wrong way, it'll, it'll be out of adjustment and it can make the machine not work right, right? Look at that. So again, it's because it's twisted wrong, right? So you gotta pay attention. You gotta be smarter than the average bear with this stuff. So let's see that. Yep, and that's the way that it should be. So nice natural path. So I do want to address the fact I need to do a better job of this. It's not that I'm afraid to clean something, okay? These probes right here, when they're old, and I can tell this one's really, really old, it has a 2015 date on it. When they're old and they're this dirty, oftentimes they have seals in here and on these ice machines, it's not worth cleaning because you end up causing a lot more problems. The, the seals leak, plus you can kind of see that there's discoloration on the nickel plating. So I have a new one right here. It comes with a new, new cable and everything. So we'll get that plugged in and then we'll test the operation of the machine after that. All right, it's all back installed, back together and water level's not high anymore. So let's go ahead and exit out of there. We'll go to real-time data, service, real-time data, time and temp. That's what I always look at when I'm adjusting these and turn it on. All right, now it takes you through the steps. Currently the pump's running, the water dump valve is open. That's the water purge mode. Then the dump valve will close, the water inlet valve will turn on, then the pump will continue running and all that. All right, we are in the pre-chill mode and it is filling with water now. So much better. So more than likely it was a mixture of the thickness probe being out of adjustment and the water level sensor being bad or extremely dirty. Um, so we'll watch this one make ice and we'll continue on with this one jumping on the roof. I was actually just here over the weekend working on the walk-in cooler because it was iced up. I came back today, it's satisfied, it's not iced up, so that's a good sign. I don't know if that video will come out before or after this one. Check this out. This unit has a bad circuit board. We had to get creative because we couldn't get one at the time. Thermostat wires running everywhere. It's not the prettiest thing, but we're running it all off the thermostat at the moment, going through all the pressure controls. So thermostat calls, goes through pressure controls. If pressure controls are good, then it runs. But yeah, circuit board's bad. I can't remember what was wrong with it. I think it's just completely bricked. I think it had power, but nothing was happening. So had to bypass it, kind of crazy. But when we do that kind of stuff, you leave it, like you try not to destroy anything. We're not cutting connectors. So that way it's just literally unplugged. You just plug everything back in. We're just waiting on the circuit board is all. So, but you gotta do what you gotta do to get them running, right? Two machines side by side, which one's which? Well, that one's the one I put the water level probe on and it's running. This one's not running yet because it's in a high pressure cutout. So we're gonna get this all opened up and it should turn on here in a minute and we'll see why it's got not on high pressure. Now this guy says high pressure cutout. Things that can cause high pressure cutout is power being turned off to the disconnect switch. Um, I'll explain that in a minute. Bad condenser fan motor and actual high pressure cutout, right? Um, right now, my refrigerant pressures are not high. 219 on the high side, 18 on the low side. And so the next thing we wanna check is if this condensing unit actually has power. There is low voltage communication wire running to this. There's a thermostat wire in here and a little board, and that's the way that it knows when it goes off on high pressure because it sends a signal down to the board. So if you interrupt that power, it'll uh, give you a, a high pressure cutout 
error. Okay, so we're checking three phase power coming in. 203, no need to open the disconnect if we check it here. 201, 200. So we've got power. So we just gotta wait for it to try to reset. It was in a timed function, so it should click out. Um, it could be a bad thermostat wire. It could be all kinds of things. So we're just gonna let it do its natural thing. Looks like we've already changed the fan cycle switch and put an aftermarket. Oh, actually, no, that's a low pressure switch. That's not fan cycle. So we could very well have a bad fan cycle switch, which would be one of these back here. Actually, it's that back one, I think, because it's been replaced. So we'll have to wait and see. When it turns on, we'll get on that switch and see if it works. It should be turning on here any minute, but one thing I wanted to check was whether or not the transformer actually had power. So between V and C, we have 27 volts, so that's accurate. So the transformer's up on the roof, and then it sends voltage downstairs through the thermostat wires to let the board know high pressure, low pressure, all that good stuff. So we should be turning on here any minute. All right, here we go. We are running. We have 202 volts. So that means our switch, the fan cycle switch, is open. And if we look down here, the head pressure is high enough that it should be running and it's not. So all that we need to do, if I can do this before it trips on high pressure, is pull this off and put this on here. Condenser fan motor's running, okay? So this guy has a bad fan cycle switch. It should cut in at 250, cut out at 200 and we were well above that so now it's running so yeah it's going to be a bad fan cycle switch so we're going to go ahead and go get one from the van i think i have one we'll put it just like this this is the low pressure we'll put a fan cycle below it and we'll let it run with it bypassed in the meantime that way we can actually see if it produces ice so came downstairs this one just made ice so this is the one i changed the water level probe on this one right here is doing some funky stuff it says program mode i don't know what the hell that is program resume but this one, the keypad's not working. We've got a bad keypad on it, but it's running at the moment. I don't like doing this, but I'm tempted since it's running to leave the fan cycle switch bypassed and get a touch pad because I'm afraid if I get it turned off that it won't turn back on. So I'm contemplating, and I know you can jump out the pins, but this thing's kind of working. So I think it's not the greatest idea, but I'm gonna leave it bypassed until I get a touch pad and we'll come back with a touch pad and then uh, maybe I'm gonna call around and see if I can find the parts right now. I'm just changing the fan cycle switch. I uh, I watched the machine for a little while and watched it go through a harvest, and it it locked itself out. It was then a long freeze or something because I was up here, but I was watching it and it just kept running and running and running and harvest, and then eventually it pumped down. So it probably went off on long freeze or something like that. Who knows? So we're gonna go ahead and continue with changing this guy out, and then we'll go downstairs and see if we can. Uh, get it to start back up. All right, I've got the fan cycle switch wired in on this guy and it's using this, which is the other wire to the condenser fan motor, and it's just a switch, that's all it is. I have it set for 200 and 250. I have the capillary ran over. I used an access fitting that have a Schrader depressor on it. So we did this side, we put a Schrader in this side so we can still access the high side with gauges if we needed to. And then at the last step, I depress the Schrader and tighten this guy on. It's nice and good, it's not gonna rub out. The wires are nice and safe, so we're gonna put the cover on and then we'll go downstairs and see if we can get this thing to reset or what else is going on with it. All right, I, uh, I cannot get the touch pad to reset, so we're gonna jump it out. Terminals three and six should make this guy turn on. There we go, now we're on. So three and six with this little ribbon cable removed should make it turn on and then just we'll, uh, we'll watch the machine and see what happens, see if we can get it to make ice. It's running now, so it's making ice. This is the one that had the water level probe. This uh, air pump's gonna need to be replaced just because it's making a loud noise. But this one's making ice right now. It's about to harvest. That one's good. There's quite a bit of uh, ice in there just from it running while I was uh, fixing the other machine. Now this machine 
has got ice on it. It's making it. It's got decent ice on both sides. We just need to see it harvest. All right. This machine just went into harvest. Um, pressures don't look too bad. They always run low head pressure in harvest. I, I stopped trying to fix that one because that always happens. Um, let's uh, watch this guy harvest the ice and see what happens here. So watch to see the vacuum being broken. It's a good indication that the air pumps are working. Um, I'm looking, I'm looking. Looks like the left side vacuum's being broken at the moment. You can kind of see where it looks like there's ice. There's these little white lines coming down from the ice. That's the vacuum breaking. And then left side, same thing, vacuum's breaking. Let's just watch it make ice. Both of them dropped. It's making ice. Looks pretty good. So what we're gonna do then is this gives me a good opportunity. We're gonna get a new touch pad, right? So I got it running, and then we'll um, we'll come back and we'll follow up on the machines then, but I don't think there's gonna be anything else wrong. So it's the next day, I was able to get the parts that I needed. Uh, when I got here, both machines are full, which is really good, all the way up. So we're gonna put an air pump on this one because it was loud, and we're gonna place the touch pad and then be done. But the fact that there's no more error messages or anything makes me feel like there's no other issues. Look at that, a fresh new touch pad. Um, I changed the touch pad and the board underneath. I don't play games with them. Just get it all new, so everything's good there. The only thing I will do is go into setup and change the LCD all the way up. I like that. And then just go through the other settings to make sure the board was acting kind of funny, so yeah, it should be on 12 hour time cycle, not 24 hour exit and then make sure the time's correct and everything. Um, no, that's not correct either, so I'm gonna have to fix all that. Everybody has their own way of doing it. I just pull the frame rail off of here and then just slide all the parts out. You know, you can tell that the dang people that clean the ice machine, look at the, they, they, they're, they break these tabs off, like silly people. But anyways, just putting it all together, the air pump's really a plug and play device, so. Everything's back together. The machines are both making ice. I heard this air pump turn on. It doesn't sound like a helicopter anymore. All is well. Like I said, no air messages when I came back the next day. So yeah, we're good to go. We'll uh, tell them to keep an eye on it. You know, ice machine videos are rather difficult for me to film. If you guys could tell that there was music playing in the background, and that's one of the hardest things about filming ice machine videos. Now, luckily this one, the music was low enough that you couldn't really make it out too well. So we should be good on that, but, um, Going with the ice machines, one thing to understand is, is I work on a lot of the same equipment, okay? So my head, and remember that these videos aren't meant to be like full-on tutorials on this is how you proceed step one through step ten, right? These videos are just um, me filming how my brain works, okay? So you're listening to me troubleshoot. And even if I wasn't filming, I would literally be talking to myself. That's just how I troubleshoot. I'm always talking to myself. My family can attest to that. My employees can attest to that. They're always asking me, what? Are you talking to me? And it's like, no, I'm just over here troubleshooting. You know, that's just, I'm just odd, okay? But I try to be mindful and remember to point things out. And like I mentioned in the video, you know, it's not that I was afraid to clean that water level probe. It's just from experience on a water level probe that old, it just leads to headaches and callbacks and nuisance issues. Okay. Then on top of that, when you looked at the bottom, you could see that the, the, the probes were becoming discolored. That's often a sign of the ice machine cleaning company that they use, not using the right cleaners. That's very common. They'll pour the wrong cleaners in there and then just whatever happens. It's, it's kind of like the wild, wild west with these companies. They just kind of do what they want to do. But step back to the beginning. When you walk up to two ice machines, when I walk up to two ice machines, it can be a little like confusing sometimes. I don't suggest people trying to troubleshoot two ice machines at the same time unless they're really familiar with the machines, okay? Um, and even for me, I can get lost sometimes. Like, wait, okay, I just got to stop and focus on one machine, you know? So luckily, I was able to work my way through that one. The water level probe wasn't a big deal. The ice thickness probe being out of adjustment, again, not a big deal. I do have to say thank you very much. 
my goodness gracious, I have forgotten the gentleman's name. He made me that ice thickness probe tool. I mean, it's a really simple concept, but he made it for me and just randomly sent it to me. And, and if you watch my videos still, please reach out to me and let me know because I genuinely don't remember who sent that to me. And it was so nice of you to do that. I use that tool all the time. Um, anyways, but you know, my employees are like, Hey, can I use that? And I'm like, no, that stays in my van, you know, cause it's really cool. Instead of using a drill bit, you just slide that thing in there. It's a really neat little tool, but it's, it's pretty simple. I mean, he just, you know, machined it for me real quick. Not a big deal. Put it into that plastic and Eh, but it's it's a cool little concept. I think the ice machine manufacturers probably need to think about making something like that. But anyways, so um, the left machine, you know, obviously was still having some issues. The touchpad being a problem, but I was able to jump the touchpad and get it running temporarily until I can get one. Luckily, my my local distributor had actually two of them, so I have an extra one for spare now. Um, but that was my last water level probe, and uh, apparently the distributor's out of the water level probe, so we'll have to wait. I put some on order, so hopefully we'll get them soon. I've been having pretty good luck going through my distributor to get parts, so I'd highly suggest if you're looking for Manitowoc parts and you're having a hard time, first thing I'm going to say, I don't know this to be completely true right now, but oftentimes manufacturers have parts even when they don't have them in stock. They usually save them for warranty repairs. So if your machines are under warranty, I highly encourage you to reach out to the manufacturer direct. Don't just try to go through your parts distributor. Call the manufacturer direct. Tell them you're working on a warranty machine. Tell them for what customer it is, and the customer's really upset and oftentimes you'd be surprised, they'll go ahead and ship you the parts, especially if it's under warranty. Now, if it's out of warranty, your SOL. You're not going to get stuff if it's out of warranty. They're not doing you no favors, but they're trying to take care of the people that are still under warranty as much as possible. Now, I don't know that to be complete fact right now. This machine clearly wasn't under warranty. I've been having pretty good luck with my actual distributor, um, but you know, just always want to try that stuff. When things are under warranty, you'd be surprised what you know. If you just reach out to a distributor and you're like, "Hey, this," and they're like, "Nope, they're back ordered for months." Give the manufacturer a call yourself and just kind of, you know, make up a story, raise some heck, and you'll get the customer uh, happy hopefully soon, okay? So um, that left machine, you know, uh, I, I work on them a lot again, so I knew how to jump out the touchpad, right? Got it running. I don't know what that program thing was. I think that that was just the touchpad going out of whack. I, I turned off the machine. I actually updated the firmware. I didn't catch that on film, but I updated the firmware. Once I updated the firmware, the program mode thing went away, and then I just jumped out the touchpad and got it to start up. But up on the roof, I knew that when it's off on a high pressure, it's either the disconnect is off, in my opinion, usually, or um, it's lost power for some reason, or the fan cycle switch has failed. If your machines have an OEM fan cycle switch. Now, I'm a huge fan of using OEM parts. I really am, okay? But there are certain instances when I'm going to tell you that using OEM might not be the smartest decision, okay? The Manitowoc fan cycle controls are notorious for being bad. They are junk, pure junk. Maybe on the new machines, they've gotten better, but on the Indigo machines, they are junk, okay? If your machine is out of warranty, do your customer a favor, sell them an aftermarket fan cycle switch like the ones that I use, the adjustable ones. Stay away from the peanut style controls. The peanut style controls, in my opinion, can't handle the high currents of the, the, the motors and everything. When the customers don't maintain their equipment, they just lead to failures, in my opinion. I don't know that to be scientific fact or anything, but it's just my observation, okay? But when I went in with that Johnson Pen fan cycle control, those things will last the life of the machine for the most part, okay? Those things are great if they're installed properly. So um, you saw that we had a low pressure switch on this because it was out of warranty, and then now we put a fan cycle switch, they'll get a little more life out of these. Now, many of my customers have new machines on order. We have just a backlog of new machines, and we're just not getting them. So it's taken a long time. Heck, I've had an air conditioner on order for almost a year now. That one, I, That's a long story, but... You know, it's surprise. It's amazing. But these customers are having to fix all kinds of stuff. Um, but, you know, I try to take care of them as much as possible and give them my uh, my opinions and try to to make sure that the customers are satisfied. We want them to stay in business. We want them to be profitable. So it's not just about making a quick buck with them. It's about taking care of the customer, building a good relationship, being honest, 
being a trustworthy contractor so that way they can lean on you and not be afraid of you ripping them off, okay? So I give them my opinions. Another thing to understand too, that there's a side of these videos that you guys don't see. Oftentimes, remember I said, these videos are my way of, of, of how I troubleshoot, okay? You're not seeing the whole picture, okay? So I'm having conversations with the customer, right? The customer understands, hey, I highly suggest that you let me change this water level probe. I could clean it and it could work, but in my experience, and that's where trust comes in. When they trust you, in, in my situation, they trust my experience. And I will tell them, hey, I think we can clean this and get it going. Or, hey, in my experience, you should let me change this probe. And here's why. The seals dry up, they, they cause problems, and it just leads to headaches. So the customer approved it, and I changed the water level probe, okay? So I'm always trying to take care of the customer because, again, I want to continue to work for this customer for another 20-plus years, right? It's not about making a quick buck. It's not about ripping them off. It's not about sales. It's not about any of that. It's about a good working relationship. Stuff breaks. There's nothing you can do about that, right? I mean, there's certain things. You can prevent that by maintaining your equipment, but it's inevitable that parts break. And that's where I come in as a technician. I'm here to fix things, right? I'm here to make sure the refrigeration equipment is operating. So I want to be that person for that customer for the next 20 plus years, right? So it's all about being honest, fair, good communication, and being a trustworthy person. So thank you so very much for making it to the end of the video. It's amazing all the support that I get from you guys. Please consider checking out my website, hvacrvideos.com. I actually just got hats back in stock the large extra large hats we were out of stock for a, a short period of time but we got a restock so we should be good to go for a while so if you're interested or if you were trying to order one they're back in stock feel free to check them out uh, remember there's a couple different methods that you can support the channel if you're interested in doing so uh, you can support the channel via paypal youtube channel memberships um, Patreon. If you're interested in buying tools, you can go to truetechtools.com. If you like what they have, if you like their pricing, you can use my offer code, big picture, one word. It's an affiliate code. I get a small commission and you get an 8% discount when you use the affiliate code. So it's a great way to help support the channel because if you need a tool and you purchase it from them, you use my offer code, you get a discount and I get a small commission from it. So check it out. I really do appreciate True Tech Tools. They're a great, great partner to have and uh, they have a lot of great stuff on their website. So check it out. Um, I think that is it. I will catch you on the next one. Uh, one last thing. Be kind to one another, okay? We'll see you later.